You are listening to Radio Lex, WLXU 93.9 FM. The views expressed on musings from the Rainbow Sparkle Palace are not necessarily the views of Radio Lex or its board of directors. The views expressed are solely my own. The following program contains subject matter that some people might find objectionable. It is solely the responsibility of the show and does not necessarily reflect the views of Radio Lex. Sensitive listeners may wish to tune out at this time. Palo Santo Lit. Feeling pretty witchy. Let's do this shit. If you're tired of the patriarchy, you're not alone. Stick around. This is Musings from the Rainbow Sparkle Palace, episode one, with your hostess, Rainbow Star. We're going to talk about patriarchy, Facebook censorship, fascism, perfectionism, overcoming it, depression, feminist rage, the whole nine yards, and uh, ways to make our voices heard. Stick around if you're down for any of the above. First and foremost, patriarchy is exhausting entirely, so let's take a second and take a deep breath together to ground ourselves. Let it out slowly. And another. Deeper than you've taken all day. Let it out slowly. And arrive here in the present where we can connect to our deepest, most ancient, most powerful selves, unmovable by that which is false, that which is fear-based, that which is no longer serving us. All right, thank you for arriving here with me. So here's why there's a podcast called Musings from the Rainbow Sparkle Palace. After a 13-year perfectionism-induced songwriting hiatus, I started writing music uh, again uh, in 2016 and was just bombarded by a miraculous bounty of weird songs from my muses. It's always felt like these little fairy muses come to me from the woods and whisper songs in my ears. That's how it's felt ever since I was seven and started writing poetry. And I was really excited and I've been studying how to be an independent musician and entrepreneur since 2016. And all of that study has involved Facebook and Instagram, mostly Facebook. And so in March of this year, when I launched a video on Facebook of me performing Patriarchy Song, which as far as I'm concerned is one of the most powerful songs that I have written so far, uh, I was dismayed and frustrated to find that Facebook had banned the video. And um, that was weird enough on its own, but then there there came dozens and dozens and dozens of bans, blocks, and deletes, some with notifications and some without, which is counter to Facebook's proclaimed um, policies. And it got to the point where they were removing, they removed my event where I was inviting women to share Me Too moments uh, as part of the music video that I was planning to create for Patriarchy Song for this upcoming record. Um music from the Rainbow Sparkle Palace Volume 2, which released in August. Um, And so that was great. That was really pretty crazy because um, here I was asking women to unite, um, not only to share the Me Too moments, but the, the premise of sharing the Me Too moments was that we were going to alchemize those horrific events into nourishing fuel. So... It was not only share your Me Too moment uh, video of yourself with the Me Too moment written on a piece of paper, but women were then invited to either burn the piece of paper in their own ritual and send the ashes to me or use the ashes in their own ritual or um, come and be present when we shot the music video and women were invited to be present to do this ritual together. Um, In part, I'm sure, because of the fact that Facebook kept removing this event and my posts about the event, um, no one showed up. Also, the fact that it's hard to share your Me Too moments, but so the whole plot was to burn the things and um, 
how I burn mine was to put them in a wood stove, which I then used to heat a meal. And you can see that in, in the music video for Patriarchy Song. Um, but then I used the ashes and mix them together, all these women's ashes of their Me Too moments, and use them to flirt- fertilize a new oak sapling planting on my friend's farm. And you can see that in the music video also. So we're using these horrific events and using them to fuel new growth and nourish our bodies. And like, that is taking power back. That is so powerful, and which is why it seems so fucked up that Facebook wouldn't allow it. Um, Meanwhile, as many of you probably know, when you like report something on Facebook that is offensive, such as rape threats or death threats uh, or racist comments, um, I, in my experience and the experience of several women that I've spoken with when I'm bitching about this, you're immediately taken through a series of screens and you end up on a screen that says, this is not against our community standards. Um, You can block this person if you don't like what they're saying. So that's why I'm here. The point is to get my voice out as a woman. And you will hear often, like every other episode, I plan to bring women on who are in Appalachia and beyond. I am looking for female artists, activists, and advocates to share their stories about their work and their life. And you're welcome to send any uh, friends of yours, or if that's you, um, my way to talk about doing an interview. And again, that email is info at rainbowstarmusic.com. So I also want your opinion um, on this song that Facebook has found so many times, like they've banned the music video, which granted is way more controversial than the song itself, because it also includes uh, mentions of domestic violence, free the nipple, I'm jogging topless down the street with a male counterpart. All four of our nipples are censored, mind you. Um, They wouldn't be if I were like Miley Cyrus and had the monetary backing of a label behind me um, in order to like be able to push through the potential censorship of that and still have my message seen. But as I am not, um, even even being censored has so many issues, um, which is really unfortunate because it's, if you ask me, this is a very powerful song. It's a very powerful message. And I think it's it's beautiful and it's healing and women are finding it healing. You know, you don't have to be playing Tibetan prayer bowls and um, your crystal bowls or whatever in order to make healing music, although I think that's beautiful and wonderful and I'm totally interested in doing that at some point. But like even my music that is super angry um, but does have a heart of compassion at its at its core um, most of the time, (laughs) um, is really healing. I think it's healing for us as a, as a species to, for once, give attention to how we're feeling. Um, because interestingly, and I think this is another tool of the patriarchy, like this idea that we have come to adopt as a society, society that our feelings are bad and that they are not to be shared. We are to be ashamed of them. We are to view them as an inconvenience and we are to stifle them. I think that is whoo, the big core of a uh, reason why we have mental health issues. And um, so um, for me, it was really healing to just touch those places in me that have been so frustrated and so disappointed by the acts of men who uh, and, and particularly in the song, men who proclaim to be feminists and then turn around and behave like freaking heathens and are so disrespectful and so manipulative and so apparently have no idea what the hell a feminist is um, and what the hell it means to honor a woman um, and treat her as an equal. Yeah, I've got so much more to say on that, but luckily there are many episodes to come. Um, but for now, I want you to hear Patriarchy Song from my latest album, Music from the Rainbow Sparkle Palace, Volume 2. And this entire album was recorded on my iPhone 6S with no fancy equipment. So if you're thinking about making a record, just keep that in mind. You don't need to be fancy. And let me know what you think. Patriarchy Song by Rainbow Star. Must be nice to be a guy. All of your anger justified. Get to do whatever you want. Nobody calling you up. It must be nice. 
used to be a man Walk through the world carefree you can Walk down the street Where what you want nobody Grabbing at your It must be nice It must be nice such a feminist you teach it at the college and how dare i not trust you when you make sexual advances even though you have a girlfriend and last week it was flirting but today you were just joking and now you're mad at me because i don't trust you I need to trust you, cause you're a feminist, you're such a feminist, go ahead, tell me one more time to dim my light, so your balls can feel bigger, cause I've got an M16, I've got an M16 in my house, I've got an M16 and I know how to use it, because I YouTubed it. No man had to teach me how to do it, though many offered and then just tried to have sex with me. For real, that's what happens every fucking time I need help on a whole new project. Every fucking time I need help at a home project. You're such a feminist that you break your vow of celibacy because the gods told you to penetrate me. It's not sex, it's just tantric healing. My womb chakra needs some clearing. All the traumatic wounding of other non-feminists But you, you're a feminist You're such a feminist Go ahead Tell me one more time to dim my light So your balls can feel bigger I've got an M16 I've got an M16 in my house I've got an M16 and I know how to use it and Usually I am very peace, love, and forgiveness but Sometimes I just get so sick of your ignorance Get the M16 and we'll make it a planter. Maybe plant some hops in it. We can make beer. God knows I could use a beer. Patriarchy benefits no one. Not even the rich white men we're taking back the world from. Sometimes I think it must be nice to be a guy All of your anger justified Get to do whatever you want Nobody calling you off It must be nice to be a man Walk through the world carefree you can Walk down the street where what you want Nobody grabbing at your It must be nice It must be nice
You are listening to Radio Lex, WLXU 93.9 FM. And we're back with musings from the Rainbow Sparkle Palace. I'm your host, Rainbow Star. And before that break, you heard my song, Patriarchy Song, many, 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 many times banned by Facebook and Instagram, basically the same company. So you can write to me, info at rainbowstarmusic.com. Let me know what you think. Uh, Should this song be banned? Should it be on Facebook? Um, You can also find the video on YouTube, search Patriarchy Song and Rainbow Star. Um, I pop up there pretty quickly and the music video is available. Um, I got to tell you, though, honestly, like I said, I've seen way, way, way worse stuff and reported way, 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 way worse stuff on Facebook. And um, yeah, anyway, so moving on here. So I'm also going to share with you here in a little bit uh, feminist, the feminist pro tip of the day. But before we do that, um, let's talk a little bit about free speech. You know, some folks may not realize it, but we really don't want to live in a world without free speech. And yes, Facebook is um, its own platform, and therefore they have a right um, to do whatever they like. However, um, they've not been adhering to their own rules. Um, And many times when they would not allow me to show the video for patriarchy song which like i said features myself and a male colleague jogging topless through the streets of berea kentucky which is my legal right as a woman um and granted was not the legal right of males in the u.s um as recently as the 20s but i'm exercising my legal right to do what men do every day with impunity and um facebook would cite their own community standards on nudity when they would not allow me to run the ad on it. However, the community standards, like, I follow the very link that they're citing, and uh, it states twice within a one small paragraph that is dedicated to nudity that if a woman is showing her breasts as a part of protests, it's okay, which obviously is what I'm doing in this video. So that's that was pretty weird. Um, it's pretty hypocritical. Um, it feels really fascist, especially when... Like I said, this has happened almost 50 or 60 times. Like, I've lost count of how many times this has happened that I've... Facebook has not allowed me to show my content, which, if you ask me, is is pretty... It's not nearly as outrageous as a lot of the stuff that I want to say, let's put it that way, and definitely not as outrageous as some of the stuff that I do see on Facebook. But it got to the point where I even shared a link to just a landing page that I had made, a singular page website with, like, a picture... And it was an invitation to behind the scenes stories and um, free downloads of, um, for, for my record, um, basically, so folks could get on my mailing list, you know, and I had just made the landing page and I posted it to Facebook and like immediately they, they said, this is against our community standards. You cannot post this. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you all, somebody, somebody's trolling me. Some Facebook person's trolling me. It it really it really freaked me out. It also got to the point where they asked for my driver's license in order for me to even be be able to share an ad for a song that is in a in a metaphoric way. Like if you, it's not overtly about domestic violence, but if you really listen to the lyrics, it's about domestic violence. They would not allow me to uh, air an ad about that song either um, without sending in my driver's license. And when I did that, they still wouldn't let me run the ad. So. So the two most powerful music videos from my recent album are currently unable to be advertised on Facebook or Insta, which has really put me in a position where I feel I have to create a new platform. And this show is that new platform. It's also become apparent that each time I'm banned from Facebook, I'm closer to potentially being banned permanently and losing my business page, which I've spent years and money building. So as I've come to learn, if you don't like the way things are going, you have to change them yourself. And this podcast will be a showcase of my own music and other creative works, as well as highlight the work of other amazing women. Again, if this if this kind of th- thing has happened to you, please, you're welcome to write me. Um, you can do that at info at rainbowstarmusic.com. Tell me what's happened to you on Facebook. Um, how has it affected you? And if you're all right with me sharing this on the air, let me know that as well. So regarding speaking out, um, speaking truth, Speaking up about domestic violence and Me Too, I want to quote Kieran Gandhi, who's a marathon runner who, um, in recent years, visibly free bled um, 
during her marathon because she was not down with being oppressed that day. Um, she rather just wanted to, like a boss, run her fucking marathon. And Kieran said, the truth is that most social change doesn't happen unless society is forced to question its problematic norms. I'm going to read that again because that is profoundly worthy of being read twice. The truth is that most social change doesn't happen unless society is forced to question its problematic norms. And, you know, that's precisely what I was doing. Um, That's why I'm jogging down the street in this Patriarchy Song music video, um, topless next to a man, and all four of our nipples are censored out and not just mine, because... The fact that I am treated differently because I have a vagina is problematic, to say the least, and um, we need to change that. When it first started happening, it really just lit a fire under my ass to speak out louder and louder and louder. But over time, it just got to where I I really felt defeated. I mean, I do a lot of this stuff solo. Um, I live and work solo. Uh, I live in tiny Berea, so... It's not very, it's not a very social town, like, at all, so I'm solo a lot, and my whole music career has been really solo, um, except for the first year when I was so blessed to have the wonderful Sam Gleaves work with me and be my mentor, and now he's moved away, <laughs> and I'm solo again, and it's really hard, um, especially when you're just continually, like, the main platform that I have studied for three years to utilize as the foundation of my music, my fledgling music business as a feminist folk punk musician and indie artist on Facebook when they're not allowing me to use that platform. Like, it's just, it's felt, I felt so defeated um, recently. You know, I I think probably after like the 45th or 50th time that this happened, I just got to where I was feeling defeated. Um, And speaking of defeat, I want to talk a little bit about depression. Um, And I've had a history of it since I was 12. It has significantly increased, um, I should say, I should say it has significantly improved um, in recent years. I've had what I would call a spiritual awakening of sorts that involved a lot of reading of Sark's books. Um, Susan Ariel Rainbow Kennedy, she makes these gorgeous, like, colorful journals and self-help books like Eat Mangoes Naked and Succulent Wild Woman, um, Succulent Wild Woman being the book that got me through my divorce, and... Um, just really reading that book allowed me to start to learn how to love myself. And I just had this moment one day where I looked at myself in the eyes in the mirror and I said, I love you. Like you're doing the best that you can look at all these things that you've done this morning to take care of yourself. Like you're a good human being. And, um, since that very day, something just switched and my depression is like 95%, um, smaller than it used to be. And so, I've always heard, um, I heard therapists say that depression is anger turned inwards. And once that depression left and I was post-divorce, that anger is now turned outwards. So let's talk about feminist rage, feminist rage, because I have really got it. Okay. Um, and I think that it is a beautiful, powerful tool. And I would also turn you to the book Good and Mad by Rebecca Traster, if you're like me and um, really sad about the fact that because of your smartphone, you can no longer get yourself through a nonfiction book. I recommend it on audiobook. You can actually get them um, from your library. There are apps that you can use on your phone and you can listen to an audiobook. I find that a lot easier for me with nonfiction. Um, cause it's so boring usually that I, I can't read nonfiction, but fiction, I will just like tear through. So Rebecca Traster in her book, Good and Mad, talks about all the instances throughout history in which the rage of females have been the catalyst for important social change and to propel women's rights into reality. And I think it's just a really good read and it's really empowering to know that, our rage, which it seems like the patriarchy has been really afraid of for a long time. And, and in general, patriarchy is really afraid of women because we're really, really f-ing powerful. And they should be afraid of, of that power if their intent is to oppress us and to make us forget who we are and to make us forget how to stay in touch with our deepest, most ancient, most powerful selves, which is like dark and dirty sometimes. And um, but beautiful in that. Um, so that's the recommended book of the day. We'll be right back.
You are listening to Radio Lex, WLXU 93.9 FM. You are listening to Musings from the Rainbow Sparkle Palace with your hostess, me, Rainbow Star. Yeah, so like I said, the purpose of this podcast is to give a platform to women's voices in Appalachia and beyond. Like I said, if you know of any woman who would be willing to come on the podcast and talk about her work, uh, we'd love to talk to her and... I can be reached at info at rainbowstarmusic.com. So now to the feminist pro tip of the day. Subject of which is fat shaming. Don't do it. All right. When your girl tells you she's finally going to order a size up of the jeans that she's been really sad about not fitting into after having spent a year trying to counter the emotional eating of last Christmas by dieting and having a personal trainer, etc., etc., in vain, your response is not to give her weight loss advice on some new diet that, by the way, she's actually already tried and is not, like, ignorant, as you are assuming by giving her weight loss advice, but the proper response is to congratulate her on loving herself. This is something that really happened to me this past week. Um, two different people within 12 hours of each other I, I shared this with, and I was given two different kinds of diet fads to follow, um, one of which I Googled and immediately was told not to do it, but do the opposite, and the other w- of which was don't eat wheat, and I've been gluten-free for five years, so that really pissed me off. Um, don't do that. When people tell you that they're embracing their size, Tell them congratulations. You're wonderful. Okay, glad we got that out of the way. All right, we'll be right back after these messages. You are listening to Radio Lex, WLXU 93.9 FM. Welcome back to Musings from the Rainbow Sparkle Palace with your hostess, Rainbow Star. So what is the Rainbow Sparkle Palace? Well, it's a real place here in Berea in the Appalachian foothills. It is my 96 square foot, 8 by 12 tiny house and homestead. I live in the woods. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm halfway up a hillside in a holler. And the hills echo when I play music outside. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. I'm here with my three cats, and they're super happy, and they're murderous killers, and they kill things, and that is sad, but it's also their nature, and they're my best friends, so they just, they also kind of live with impunity, kind of like white men, except a lot more awesome because they're cats. (laughs) My tiny house, by the way, has no indoor plumbing. Um, I do have an outhouse with a compost toilet and um, six instruments, uh, stringed instruments fit inside, if you can imagine that, in 96 square feet. Um, I love having a compost toilet and not 
something in my drinking water that feels intelligent to me. It also feels like I am giving back to the earth, which is precisely what is happening, very literally. And I'm not contributing to the issue of access to clean drinking water, which is a problem for many people on the planet. It's also a lot of, it takes a lot of energy to clean our drinking water um, the way that we do it here in the States. It's a super peaceful place. Like I was a prepper at one point and um, started Kentucky Earthship Group, which some of you may know. It started in Lexington. I lived in Lexington for 10 years and um, was trying my best to create an off-grid community and gather some people to reskill. Um, we traveled around the state um, going to different reskilling workshops and we we're just like trying to be back to the landers. But as it turns out, it's really hard to get people together. Um, but I can't help but continue to try. I'm like a community organizer at heart and despite myself, really, I'll have to say because it's a lot of work and I've not had much success at it, but I keep trying. Um, but it, I'm, it was a good experiment. I'm glad I did it. Um, also, in retrospect, if you're thinking about building an earthship in Kentucky, do not. This is not the climate for it. Uh, it's cool in New Mexico, in Taos, New Mexico, like where um, Mike Reynolds, is that his name? It's been so long. Mike Reynolds, yeah. Um, that's where he originated the idea of the earthship. But it's too humid in Kentucky for earthships. Um, so I had this this tiny house um, actually custom made. It's technically a shed. And some friends helped me put insulation in it and drywall and run electric to it, even though I fought electric um, tooth and nail. But eventually I got electricity. I'm really glad that I have it now. It makes life easier. Um, life is tough in the wintertime when I don't have running water um, outside from the hose. Of course, it gets really cold, and so it makes it tough. But, you know, like I said at the beginning of the hour, my muses just thrive out here. And um, I grew up in Berea as a kid for the first nine years of my life, and I just have the fondest memories of living in the woods. Um, and when I was nine, we moved to Somerset, and we lived in a subdivision, and our backyard was overlooking the city and there was a freaking airport below and we had this huge yard but it was all mowed and there were like two trees in the backyard that had decorative stones around them and I was so depressed it made me so sad I think that probably was the start of my depression when when I was nine and we moved to the suburbs and I remember my dad saying to us get outside and play and we're like and do what like <laughs> there's nothing to do like play basketball on concrete like there was nothing to do it sucked so as I like to say um, moving to Somerset at the age of nine turned me into an instant hippie. Um, and actually, I wrote a song about it. It's called Berea, and I'll play it for you now. True story. This is Berea by Rainbow Star. That's me.
when I was nine, family business got closed out. You are listening to Radio Lex, WLXU 93.9 FM. Welcome back to Musings from the Rainbow Sparkle Palace with your hostess, Rainbow Star. Before the break, you heard my song, Berea, uh, about true story about growing up here in Berea, moving to the suburbs and being heartbroken by it all. Let's talk a little bit about perfectionism, actually. 
So another more accurate term for perfectionism is high self-criticism. And that is something that I have been graced by the ability to overcome in small incremental, like kind of few and far between, um, but increasing uh, amounts in recent years. Um, now at the age of 33, I feel like I'm getting better at life, although some days it feels like that's not the case. Um, but just letting go of perfectionism and just realizing that this fantasy I have in my head that everybody else that I see doing stuff is perfect behind the scenes and perfect all the time and every other couple has it together and every other musician is like super talented and they just came out of the womb that way and every other entrepreneur like you know has been overnight success that is bullshit that's also I think a tool of the patriarchy I'm gonna go ahead and blame it on the patriarchy I'm it's a I'm a fan of blaming things on patriarchy because it also seems to fit so so often like this idea, you're not good enough, um, things are only black and white, you're only good or you're shit, like, that to me is absolutely a tool of the patriarchy. It also smacks of religion, which, in my experience growing up Catholic, is super patriarchal, super damagingly patriarchal, and um, it doesn't help. Like, it's so shame-inducing. Shame never helped anyone. Like, like Taylor Swift says, shade never made anybody less gay. And I would also say shame never helped anyone be them their best selves. I consider it an act of feminism every time I'm able to, like, bite the fear in the act that is keeping me from doing something that my heart really wants me to do, like make this podcast, like put out a record after 13 years of not playing guitar because I met somebody who was better at it than me who'd had 13 years of lessons and I had had one lesson and the rest have been self-taught. So the fact that I was able to just start making music and say, screw it, I felt, I feel like I was really buoyed by my divorce and separation and, and like near escape from death at the hands of my ex-husband, um, who is a narcissistic sociopath. And I highly recommend that everyone who doesn't know what that term means, even if you think that you know what it means, but you haven't done research on it, look it up because narcissistic sociopaths are a often volatile and large, like, significant percentage of our population. One to seven percent is are the estimates that I have read, and these are people who cannot be approached like any other person who has em empathy. They're highly manipulative, they're highly charming, and then they're highly damaging um, to yourself and your relationships with your friends. A lot of times, serial killers follow, uh, fall under this category and, and these mental illnesses. And uh, a lot of times abusive relationships with men, the man is a narcissistic sociopath. Um, I hear so often so many girlfriends that are in involved with men and I just, I'm like, my ears prick up. It's really dangerous. So if you don't know anything about that, please do yourself a favor, look it up, learn about it and learn how to know the signs so that you can walk away. Oh, let me pull out my Artist Way book. All right. So The Artist Way is a highly recommended book by Julia Cameron. It's been around for decades, and it's a workbook. Um, you can work it solo if you have motivation like that. I tend to not, but if you do, good for you. Um, there's also a Facebook group, and you can even start a group and do some face-to-face -face meetings and um, work it with some friends. Chapter three is called Recovering a Sense of Power. It says, anger is fuel. We feel it, and we want to do something, hit someone, break something, throw a fit, smash a fist into the wall, tell those bad but we are nice people, and what we do with our anger is stuff it, deny it, bury it, block it, hide it, lie about it, medicate it, muffle it, ignore it. We do everything but listen to it. Anger is meant to be listened to. Anger is a voice, a shout, a plea, a demand. Anger is meant to be respected. Why? Because anger is a map. Anger shows us what our boundaries are. Anger shows us where we want to go. It lets us see where we've been and lets us know when we haven't liked it. In the recovery of a blocked artist, anger is a sign of health. Anger is meant to be acted upon. It is not meant to be acted out. Anger points the direction. We are meant to use anger as fuel to take the actions we need to move where our anger points us. You can find this podcast on Spotify on all your favorite platforms, Musings from the Rainbow Sparkle Palace, and you can always email me at info at rainbowstarmusic.com. Let me know what you thought about this, and you can find all of this music um, that was played on the show 
at uh, rainbowstarmusic.com or by searching for Rainbow Star on any of your favorite music platforms. And uh, here is Kill All Men by me, Rainbow Star. Welcome back to Musings from the Rainbow Sparkle Palace. That was Kill All Men by me, Rainbow Star. An expression of the rage that I have felt. And um, no, I definitely don't want any men to actually suffer. Um, This is an art piece. It's an expression of a feeling. If it happens to be offensive to you, it's probably because you don't quite understand where I'm coming from. I haven't had the same experiences that I've had. Um, to get to the point where you feel like you need to write a song called Kill All Men. 
So one of, one of the responses that I've had to the song, which is currently unreleased, but I have shared it with a few friends and with my patrons on Patreon, one of the questions that was posed to me was, how would you feel if someone said, kill all women or kill all people of color? And I'm like, first of all, I do not believe in reverse racism or reverse sexism. Second of all, people have said those things and people do say and behave in ways that are of those things every day. And people of color and women suffer and have suffered at the hands of men, mostly white, since the beginning of this patriarchal era that we're currently in. And the reason, furthermore, why I don't believe in reverse racism or reverse sexism is that it's an issue of power. Um, men do have power over women. And when they say things that are um, volatile towards women or people of color, women or people of color suffer because of those things that these white men have said. My saying, kill all men in this song, um, is not going to actually hurt any men. Um, you're not going to see a bunch of women going out and killing men <laughs> because of this song. That's not going to happen. Maybe in someone's fear-filled fantasy, but truly this is just uh, an expression of the bottled up rage that I have felt over injustices being committed against myself and other sisters and people of color every single day. You know, there fluctuates periods for me of compassion where I'm able to see that the reason why I have encountered many men, um, mainly white men, who disbelieve that women experience the oppression and the injustices that we're speaking about and disbelieve that people of color are enduring um, unfair treatment, to say the least, every day. The reason why that, that men can't believe that is because... I'm hoping with this compassionate mind, it is very painful to acknowledge the experiences of others' pain. And there's a part in our psyche that wants to resist that. So if we say it's not true, it's not real, your experience didn't really happen, you misinterpreted it, it makes it so that we don't have to experience the pain of another's suffering. And it's the easy way out. Um, and we're all guilty of it, I think, at certain points. We can all be guilty of it. I myself have been guilty of it, I will say. Um, but that's a more compassionate way of looking at it. So this song was written after months of dealing with a man who um, was disrespectful to me in my place of business. And um, I'll tell you that I do not take on male clients. I have my own business and I do not take on male clients for this reason every single single time that I have had a male client, they become a problem. Their behavior becomes an issue and I have to let them go as a client. So this was actually the husband of a client who had passed a duty of um, communication with me and pay me, paying me off to her husband. She's busy. And for five months that had been the case. And for five months I'd been saying, oh my God, I have to let this guy go. I cannot continue working for him. This is horrid. And it was just, it was coming home with me at night and it was really upsetting me. And I was realizing that, you know, if I were his plumber rather than his housekeeper, and now this is an assumption, I, I don't know this, but this is part of what was um, so incendiary to me was imagining that if I were a plumber or a male working for him, um, doing or doing or simply doing a traditionally male job, such as plumbing his toilet, he would not balk at my request to be paid on time, um, nor would he refuse my requests to um, receive his email address so that I could send him reminders of our appointment in order to help him to pay me on time. So <laughs> uh, I'm getting pissed off just thinking about it right now. So I did eventually let him go, and it was such a relief to be able to do that, and that that was the catalyst for this song. So um, that being said, we're going to go ahead and wrap up the show. Thank you for joining me on me the first episode of Musings from the Rainbow Sparkle Palace. There's much more to come. You can find us on Spotify and all the major podcast platforms. And email me info at rainbowstarmusic.com if you would like to be on the show. You can find everything we talked about today in the show notes. Links to all books or songs referenced at rainbowstarmusic.com slash episode one. And you can find me on Instagram at palacepodcast. 
and you can leave a review on Spotify. You can do all the things that you want to do. And I'll be here every Wednesday at 11 p.m., also on uh, WLXU. All the music that you heard on the show tonight was created by me, Rainbow Star, produced and edited all the things by me. I hope that you learned something about um, being a rainbow on this show. We, we started out with uh, <laughs> with Palo Santo and my Tibetan prayer bowl, and we ended with a song called Kill All Men. I live up to my name. I'm a rainbow of emotions, and this is who I am. So I uh, hope that by being my true self, I have encouraged you to be your true self this evening. So take care. This is Rainbow signing off. Stay fierce. Stay sparkly.